look at this in sledge this is right <laughs> Looks like right near the plaque line. Now he's looking for that spot where he can cut left, cut right. Nice job out there, Daniel. You finished this. The sun's just about to set, but you still made it within the time crossing the stage for the 2023 King of the Hammers race. Talk to me about that. All right, well, King of the Hammers is over. The buggy is back in the shop here at your guys' house. Uh, we're sitting here with Daniel Gutenberg and Sean Gutenberg. And uh, you guys raced in the 4800 race, so... Uh, I guess the first thing we want to ask is, did you finish? Yep, we finished. Yeah. What place uh, did you guys uh, come in across the line? Uh, uh, last 24th, time I worked, yeah, overall. 24th in class. Yeah, 24th in uh, 32nd class. 32nd overall, because we raced with other classes. 4,600, 4,500. Yeah. But as you were saying, it's kind of weird to be ranked with them because they don't do all the rock trails that you guys did. No, the... I think it's a 4600 class. They get bypasses on all the hard rock courses, so yeah. they got a yeah. considerably shorter, shorter race day than we got. Yep. Well, you guys came across the line, I believe, right around five o'clock in the evening. Yeah. Um, I saw you guys cross the finish line, and uh, during the day, as I was following the race, um, there was some questions on whether you guys were going to finish, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I never uh, had a question. Car was doing good. Uh, Lost a few tires, uh, had some issues. I mean, well, before we lead into what happened during the race yeah. day, we'll go back and we'll <laughs> talk about uh, qualifying and uh, what happened uh, during the week down there leading up to the race. The yeah. race was on Friday, and you guys got there uh, the Sunday Friday before. Friday before. Oh, the Friday before. Yeah, okay, yeah we had so tech there on, for a week. We had chassis tech on Saturday morning, first thing, and that went perfect. Yeah. A, a brand new car had yeah. to get teched, went through tech fine. Yeah. Um, Got us on a couple event lines on differentials weren't low enough, but we were able to fix that. that during tech and marked us off right there, so good to go. So uh, I got down there on Monday, and you guys were panicking, kind of running around the car. You had some issues uh, with the fuel system, right? Well, we went out to the originally we were going to race the pre run the desert section in the Can Am, but I ended up blowing a motor in that on. There's your first cost of King of the Hammers. You blew the engine in the can am. So our right? pre-runner yeah. was down there, so we decided uh, we had Monday morning we were going to get up first thing and go out and pre-run the desert loop with the car, but we had some GPS issues, and they were kept changing the core, so we ran down to Hammertown and got that squared away on the GPS. I don't think we actually we hit the race around, course until noon. Yeah, around noon, 11, noon. So, so you know, new car woes, you raced it at, at NorCal a couple times, but it was always one little thing that you're finding yeah. and fixing. Yeah. And this time it was the fuel system. So I, I talked to Daniel a little bit, and after multiple fuel pumps, changing the in tank, you know, trying another external pump, it turns out it was something super simple. What was that, Daniel? Yeah, well, I was changing spark plug wires, and Kevin Yoder came over and asked me if I checked the, the fuel flow, and I was like, no, I hadn't yet, and pulled the line off the motor, and, you know, kind of hard to figure that out. We had good fuel flow, and he's like, well, did you check the filter? And I was like, no. So I pulled the front filter out, and it was pretty well, much Well, the first solid. thing you did to check the fuel filter is you turn on the pump and held it up, and it squirted fuel out of the filter, yeah. right? So yep. you're thinking, hey, the filter's flowing, but yeah. after taking it out and blowing through it and noticing it was restri restricted... It's hard to believe that just a few little particles of foam or dirt or whatever from building yeah. the car could plug that filter. My dirty how, hands messing with the foam and the How many microns out. is that filter? 10 microns. So, yeah. so that's a 10 micron filter. So um, There's maybe only been five or six tanks of fuel through this car. And this is brand new fuel cell, brand new foam, yeah. brand new lines. It just yep. goes to show that the fuel system is one of the most important things in the race. The filter car. will be checked before every race. Now. Yep, uh, and maybe even just change, right? Yeah, because this get is a super, couple spares, super just cheap. Change part, them, clean so. them, rotate them. Yeah. So fix the fuel filter, and that was hurting you in qualifying. We actually didn't figure out that it was a filter until a day after qualifying. I thought we had it. We took off in qualifying the lower range, got to the top of the hill, put it in high range, and uh, in high range, it just did not have any power. It, you you were able to do one desert loop. Um, <clears throat> pre-running in this thing yeah. none of the rock trails right no and so you spent tuesday wednesday thursday pretty much chasing this down so your whole week was was filled up by the only pre couple we little did things. of the rock section was we went out and did the sand hill to make sure the car had enough power to get yeah. up that sand hill. It, and so in qualifying you had a pretty good run in qualifying yeah, yeah where did that put that. you in the pack put us at uh 41st 41st okay yeah. and so um you took off 
41st, uh, pretty dusty on uh, Friday morning. Majorly dusty, oh, um, yeah. And and your your 4800, which the engine is unlimited in the 4800 class, right? Yeah. And so you guys have a stock six liter in this thing, yes, right? Yep. Uh, which those things run 340 horse, maybe. You know, yeah, I think it's like 345. 345, <laughs> and like I know a bunch of other guys that are running six, seven hundred horsepower LSs, right? So hard to keep up in the desert with a with a motor like. No, not really. No, yeah. you know, we passed a couple cars. He kept telling me, "Don't hit them, don't hit them." And yeah, I was just... first run on the car, I didn't want to wad it up in the desert. You know, tapping somebody just. Yeah. Well, See, we were already we already caught them, so we were we had more motor, more suspension than they did. We were gonna get around them. Just had to find the right. So time. let me ask you this: Did you pass Jacob P? Um, actually, we never passed never Jacob did. P. He, behind he, he started behind us and uh, stayed. I mean, he didn't. We never lapped him, so he that was good. He chose not to but... do qualifying this year, so yeah. he had to start last. from the back. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I think if I remember right, they had problems in Turkey Club right yeah. at the end of the first. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I was hoping that you guys would have swapped it up a little. Yeah. I talked to him a little bit before <laughs> yeah. the race, and he's like, "Oh, it'd be fun to race with him." Yeah, yeah, okay. for sure. Um, I talked yeah. to him before the race. So you guys yeah. came in, um, did pretty good on the first lap. Yeah, you, your your biggest uh, problem of the whole day, or one of the biggest problems, was tires, right? Yeah, and, and I don't know if it's tires. Uh, my driving probably. Your dad yeah. admitted that it was his driving. <laughs> driving and a little bit on the GPS. I'll take it. Yeah, um, forgot to zoom in in the first couple of rock trails. We got into spooners and outer limits. We're kind of following a car in front of us. I was trying not to get hit with rocks in the face, you know, because we were following pretty close and uh, wasn't really paying attention to the GPS. Forgot to zoom in and got to one turn and followed them and it wasn't the right turn. So yeah, he made a, he made a right and went up the hill. So that happened. looked like the burned in line and followed him up. Yeah. And Just so you're aware, that happens in the 4400 and the 4800. Oh, yeah. All the big boys, as soon as one guy goes one way, everybody just follows him. I mean, a lot of these people I've been interviewing, Brendan Thompson, um, some of the big guys, their GPS goes out. They don't remember where the trails are, so they just look for the, the rutted in dirt yeah. path. Yeah, right? for sure. And it, it's everybody just goes to a dead end. You know, they, yeah. they say... So, uh, you know, a lot of guys race in Baja, a lot of times they'll put up, like, fake barriers and turn the whole group of cars into a dead-end yeah. alley with nowhere to go see just to see a bottleneck and see them turn yeah. around. Well, that same kind of thing happens in this racing. So you just randomly follow these cars off the course. Yeah. yeah. At the end of the first lap, I think we came in in 20th position, time corrected, and then uh, when we got to Spooners and Outer Limits, we passed probably Man. four or five cars yeah. in Spooners. Not more. People yeah. stuck and winching, and we just took the right lines and... And you know, you're but those guys got me when we made that wrong turn. We're coming back down. I tried to nose yep. in, and they drove over the front of the car because we were trying to get back, and they <sighs> were coming. And they were taking the right so course. They so they passed you right back. So yeah, yeah. They passed us right there. And then, so you guys run a DOT, basically a tire that you could run in any vehicle on the street. That's yeah. one of the rules. Yep. 37 inch max, right? Yes. And you guys were running Nitto Trail Grapplers this year, which I think yeah. our sponsor here, Bender Construction, he kicked in with some tires. I thought that was awesome. He yeah. bought your and, tires. And helped yeah. us with pits, too. Yeah. yeah, pits, radios, yeah, for sure. So, how many tires did you take? One in qualifying, <laughs> after the finish in qualifying. We took yeah. 10 brand new tires yeah. and wheels with us. The other new set I didn't really want to put on the car. Um, we put the Nittos on the car. Ran those. Um, I'd killed a tire in qualifying after the finish line. I hit that big Did, rock and killed the front tire. It, yeah, not Eric's rock, but you know, yeah, no, no, not I think that he one. hit that one too yeah. in the parallel. Yeah. And again, then, but... did you take any tires in the first desert lap? No, nope. So no tires in the desert lap. So you did a, uh, one in Spooners there, yeah. right? Um, and then we didn't do no, any, no oh, tires no. in Spooners. No. Uh, we got all the way through Spooner, Spooners, outer limits, everything. Came into pits. Well, we didn't come into pits. We bypassed pits, yeah, and then. Yeah. At the top of, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Blue Dot. Um, yeah. After Thor's hammer at the top of Blue Dot, we got stuck just a little bit, uh, pedaled it a little bit, and the car hopped over to the passenger side and kind of tied it on the wall. Yeah. yeah. But um, we were less than a couple yeah. miles from pit, so we drove it into pit. But oh, you didn't even flat. change it. Nope. You had them yeah. change it. I was going to. I could, I could see how, many, there. how many tires did you change on course? Uh, we two. changed two ourselves. So two on course, one yeah. in the pit. Um, and then they re-racked when you came yes. back through. Yep. Um, and then... I killed one at the bottom of Sledge. Yeah. Right before it. You guys winched Sledge, I assume. <laughs> well, uh, after I rolled it in the so nacho this dip. Is, this is where it gets good, right? So <laughs> yeah. you rolled it in nacho dip, and we got a father-son combo here. I've got some um, video of that, too. What, what kind of um, 
verbal abuse back and forth was happening when you rolled the well, car. I got in there and the car didn't want to climb it and I tried yeah. moving and it kept hitting the rock right in the middle so I moved to the left and I went too far and I got it up and I thought I was just getting ready to pedal and the car just slowly on its Did side. Sean have anything nice to say to you when that happened? I didn't no. say too much. Um, I just asked him, do you want me to get out or like what do you, what do you want me to do? Am I getting out? Because there were some other guys there, you know. Um, didn't know if we were both getting out. I was on the bottom, so I was trying to figure out who was getting out first. Yeah. So somebody didn't get landed on or crawled over. Uh, so that took you yeah. a while, right? Yeah, I mean, he got out and helped try yeah. the ranch. He's not real. He I've never winched a lot before, and doing so I was kind of like a little lost. Outside. Originally, he ran the winch line straight out, and I'm yeah. sitting past 90 degrees. Yeah, yeah. And I kept trying to suck it in, and it was just dragging me on my side. It was actually sending Dude, me farther it works. over. Yeah, uh huh. And then apparently the anchor rock broke and fell down. Yeah, yeah. so I was told me to I was kind of following the guys that were. And this whole time there. I'd already unbuckled, so I'm like this, holding yeah. the roof and trying to. So did you yeah. get passed by quite a few people there when you were? Um, no, we were in the trail. Oh, because so, you were blocking uh, it. Yeah, there we was a a only, there, that only, is one benefit. Yeah. Only to, like two or three guys came up behind us though. Okay. So. but that was about an hour and a half or so. Yeah, hour. but one of the guys came up behind us, and finally I got out of the car and then showed him we need to anchor over to the side and use a snatch block back to the top of the cage yeah. and then one of the guys behind us hooked to the same point on the top and kind of pulled us back and got us flat again so you got going you got moving. i backed out of the way and i think there was two guys there at that yeah. time and they went up and went through and there was then, a yeah there was a lot of oil dumping through the side panel so we backed the car out of there to check in and, and it is sort of etiquette that even though you were in front of them and yeah, you rolled over those sure. guys helped you get unrolled yeah. they got you out they of asked us, are you, you gonna let just, us go you don't just plug it right yeah, back no, up no right? are you gonna let us go I was like, they were, yeah, nice, they were nice enough to ask you yeah so, yeah, so sure. it's interesting we're talking about this because this might play into another interview with tom ways it's tom ways because there was other <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah you know it could lead into that too yeah. but so but your situation everybody helped you got out of the way because look you rolled let those yep. guys get going. You held them up long enough, and they're ready. And then when we got up through that section, I pulled back into it, and we just hooked the winch up. Hooked the pulled winch. It, pulled it through it. And winched all the way through Guy the came up right behind us after we got up, and we were running the winch line back in and everything else. He did the same thing I did. Yeah, right rolled over the, the same spot. And, and you were low on oil, so you couldn't just get in it and pipe it. Exactly. No. You had to kind of ease it in with yeah. low oil pressure. We, we eased it all the way to back to the pits. That was two or three trails, wasn't it? Yeah, we had to go through uh, so, Z-Walk. Yeah. Um, Whatever, what, quite what's a at the top. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah where you're at an angle. Yeah. So we went to the plaque so, line, too. He yeah. stayed out of the car. Yeah, you definitely we, want to win. He stayed out of the car until we pretty much got to the mailbox and he got yeah. back in. Yeah, that's a smart way to do it. So, yeah. got oil in the car, hit the trails, finished the race at 5 o'clock. An hour or so to go, right? Lost um, a tire out in the desert before we finished the race. It, that yeah. was yeah. brutal. Right Bent, before, right <laughs> before you were coming line. in. Two or three cars got, got us there, too, while we were changing that yeah. tire. Yeah. Bent drive you know. line. So you, so we you might have been in 21, yeah. 22 if you didn't get past changing yeah. the tire there in the yeah. desert. Yeah. But, you know, this is what happened. This is how it is. Yeah, so it's racing. I looked around the race car a little bit here before you got here, Sean, and, I mean, very minimal damage. I see a strip sway bar arm, which is just the arm you got to get. Yep. A um, couple of bends in the WFO trailing arms. <laughs> yeah, they, no they held uh, up, though. They held up. They took a beating. Of, bunch of rash on the uh, on the rear drive line. Thank God you used a 120 wall on the rear drive line. Yeah, well, yeah. thank uh, Sacramento drive line, sir. Yeah. That. And, and, I mean, really not any money to be spent on the car to go race at Prairie City. Uh, yeah, no, except for one. Bit. Power steering it. On Saturday, yeah. we were uh, pitting for Kevin Yoder, and uh, we were pretty hard on it getting back and forth to camp to get him a drive line when he broke the drive line. And then uh, Sean went to take it back to camp, and uh, he sent me a text. He wasn't coming back out to the pit because it blew a steering pump. Yeah. So I happened to look at that steering pump when I got here, and you know, a lot of these uh, yeah. car failures and part failures that happen on King of the Hammers, I'll take we the like, blame on we that like to say, entirely. oh, we blew a power steering pump or we blew a fuel filter, but you know, the fuel filter blows when the filter plugs so much that it can't push through and it overheats the filter, right? Yeah. Well, the power steering pump blew because you decided to up upsize the bolts from 5 sixteenths to 3 eighths. Yeah, when I got the your pump, pump, I couldn't find any uh, three and a half inch bolts around here that were 5 sixteenths, so I looked at it and thought I could just... You just bored the holes a little bit bigger? Well, there's a reason. I had some three and a half inch, three eighths bolts. Well... You know, it lasted all summer in the race, and it broke on Saturday, so I mean... So it made it so all the way did. through yeah. the race, but so like every every time a human thinks that they can make something better on a part, 
Yeah. Sometimes that's, there's a reason. I wasn't making it better. I just didn't want to have to run and get bolts. I get it. Yeah. So <laughs> trying to get the car done. Power steering yeah. pump failure. You're just gonna get the new pump, not drill it out, put five yeah. sixteen yeah. bolts yeah. in it, put the car back together, get it ready for Prairie City. So hopefully we can get a sway bar in. Yeah. Might be a little tippy. Hit up Brannick Brannick Motorsports. See if we can't get the uh, new sway, sway bar, bar arm worked yeah. out. Yeah. So. I gotta ask you guys, like you're out there on the course, you're racing all day long. You got really fast guys coming by you. You got slow guys coming by you. You got I don't think three ever really got past. three different classes. Down the desert. Couple, what was uh, the coolest? Passes, but... What was the coolest thing you saw? Like somebody just slaying a line or rolling over hard or like somebody blowing you passing somebody or vice versa. I've got the video of the on the yeah when they uh, do the jumbotron there in Hammertown on the first lap. Probably right after the lake bed, I had a slower car in front of me, and they had the helicopter sideways uh -huh. getting me in. Basically, I thought I was a lot closer than what I was in the video, uh -huh. but it was single track, and I kept dipping out trying to get around him. And the big bushes, and you know, at the bottom of the big bush, there's either a rock or a big sand berm. I didn't yeah. want to hit one of those yeah. and walk the yeah. car up. And I finally got him, but I, that was online, showed that whole section. Oh, so you're cool. racing a car in front of you, trying yeah. to pass it, and there's a helicopter side surfing yeah. in yep. front of that. And you're looking at the helicopter. That was one of the ones. And it's dusty yeah. and all this stuff. Wanted to bump him, and he's like, "Nope, don't bump him." Yeah, don't bump on, him. on the horn, pushed to pass, timed out three times. Nobody yeah. like they weren't just getting they weren't and, getting out of the way. And definitely gonna need a siren. People yeah. don't realize Louder. that in your car yeah. they set you up with this little yep. unit, and when mm -hmm. you come up behind somebody who's slower, you yeah. push the button to pass. On their dash, that light flashes that yeah. there's somebody behind you needing to pass. Yep. That's also racer etiquette. I'll just say they must have been broke because they didn't get out. Well, yeah. I could tell you as a co-driver, when ROS is lit up, yeah. not very often I say pull yeah. over. Pedal like, it, pedal that, it, pedal that, it that, more. that just makes you drive faster. Yeah, so, for sure. Um, you, you tried it three times. Yeah, timed it out, timed out three times. And then you passed him, right? Yeah. I and, stepped out once beside him, got up to his door to let him know I was there. And then, like I said, I ran out of room and backed out and dumped in and then behind he pulled him. Off. And then uh, maybe about a mile later, I had a clearer section and got in there. Okay. Yeah, once we got around him, you could definitely tell we had more suspicion. Well, that's pretty cool when you see the helicopter, you know, the top. Of you what about the rocks? What's the coolest, you know, thing you had in the rocks? <sighs> I think the cool thing about the rocks is the only problem I had was sledgehammer. Yeah. That's we it. Walked like, you could I mean, we, we ran all the trails. We the only passed so many cars, so many guys I know that, like, have just cars that just work, that have more motor, more suspension travel, better shocks, better suspension, and we were just wheeling right around them the whole time just picking I'd better really lines like to know where i don't I, was at I don't know like when we rolled, we passed rolled. a lot of stock yeah. you know like, what stuck position cars. Were. yeah well you know the deal is i mean we i don't know exactly how many people finished but probably somewhere in the 50 range yeah. you know you guys were 25 it was, um it's a big deal to go enter the race for the first time father-son combo uh get through all these small issues qualify well race the race and finish yeah. you know um sure. and so to me like i'm i'm so stoked to have been able to watch you guys build this car for two years put it together yeah. go down there on a shoestring budget i mean yeah. i passed you guys on i-5 with a, this long trailer that looked like you know the clampets go to go racing and <laughs> hey, two rigs nice and trailer. dirt bikes and strapped on stuff and you know you you guys didn't have a, a nice pit in hammertown we're up in the no. dusty desert yeah. and we're you know, so out by ourselves, yeah. You know, sure. it's grassroots racing for sure. Father son sure. combo, build it in the shop in the backyard. Um, not a huge racing budget, and uh, I know that you guys, the smiles per mile, you know, oh, yeah, we're flowing sure. the entire time. I know you're pretty emotional on the finish. Lots of stories um, to talk I, about. I, I didn't I, expect I, to be on the I, stage. I know <laughs> you didn't expect to finish, didn't be on the stage, but I was worried that. Uh, maybe you were emotional because you beat the crap out of him, <laughs> you know, or he yelled at you, or you guys were fighting during the race. No, so no. I'm glad to hear you weren't fighting. It'd be a lot better, better yeah. story if you beat the, his ass. I think the winching you know. was probably the worst part of yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I I know how to winch a car back over, but him being out of the car and I'm sitting on my side, and all I can see is the rocks out the windshield. Yeah, and then you can't communicate well because no. you don't yeah. have microphones in your helmet. I've never even yelling. been in anything well, that's been rolled over, been on its side, been upside down, let alone well, I'm, have to winch it back over. I'm stoked that you guys did what you did. You got the car out. You got fish. I mean, the thing hardly has any damage. I mean, yeah. the panels aren't even destroyed. Yeah. I mean, no, panels, panels, you know. Uh, you're, you're, you must be that picky that you didn't even hit rocks on the side, you know? Actually, so. I when we did qualifying, I thought this panel would be gone, the line we yeah. took, but it yeah. pirouetted right around the rock, and uh, 
well, save that panel. I'll tell you what, uh, thank you for letting me follow you through this. Yeah. Thank you, Sean, for all the work you've done on this car, and, uh, and Daniel. Thanks for the help. Yeah, thank you to WFO. Uh, uh, we wouldn't have been able to do it without you guys. You know, Sean works at WFO, sure. so Sean's making parts after Those work. Those gear and axle guys, home. and, you know, Kevin learning, making me learn how to use a computer and everything, and everybody teaching yeah, me. Yeah, during this whole project, yeah. project you learned how to um, draw in SolidWorks, yeah. uh, cut, bend, break, um, form, your welding has gone up. Yeah, crazy. So like everything that's learned is is just awesome, you know. Yeah. Um, and so, really, what's going to happen is you get to drive the car now, huh? Yeah, huh? yeah, a little bit. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna hold off on that a little bit going to school. I don't want to get hurt, you know, being in the car. Oh, so. I think you should drive it. At, so, at Grace, so. We'll I see. think that's it. We'll uh, we'll call this one and uh, have a good night. Morning, Sean. Morning, guys. You ready to go racing? Hey, we're ready as it could be. Well, we're getting the uh, police escort right into Hammertown. It's about 7.30. I like the fact you made your dad take the car down there, get it in line, get it ready. Yep. Wanted to stay in the trailer, stay in bed a little longer, man. I'm going to have to get out of the car. He just gets to sit in there the whole time, so need a little more sleep, you know? This is kind of the same way I do it, too. Yoder used to get up early. He was all nervous. He'd go get in line, and then I'd have my coffee, you know, relax, get down there right before the race starts. Yep. What number are you guys starting? Uh, I think we're starting 41st, but I've already seen that there's actually a couple cars that uh, aren't going to be starting in front of us, so it's going to move us up a little bit. So that's more than middle of the pack, right? Yep. 158 cars is what's registered to race today. Holy like crap. That. All right, well, here we go.